now for tonight's starters. First, for the visiting Knights. Number three, Scotty Austin. Number 11, Tyler McNeil. Number 21, Colin Boucher. Number 44, Devin Anthony. Number 45, Luis Torres. Northern Essex is coached by Coach Tardis. I mean, tonight. And now, for your Bristol Community College Bayhawks. At forward, a freshman from Somerset Berkeley High School, number 34, Nate G. Nathaniel Gawanter. At guard, a sophomore from East Providence High School, number 15, Dominic Santos. At forward, a sophomore from Aponiquit High School, number 10, Joe Lopes. At guard, a sophomore from New Bedford High School, number 4, Chad Nagia. And at guard, a sophomore from New Bedford Regional Folk High School, number 1, Stanley Freeman. The Bayhawks are coached by Brian Fernandez, assisted by Clayton Timas and Eric Diaz. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I could ask you to please rise for the singing of our national anthem performed by our own Lucy Cabral. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to La to the LaFrance Gymnasium here in Bristol, here in Fall River, Massachusetts, for today's NJCAA Region 21 matchup between the Bristol Community College BayHawks and the Northern Essex Knights. How you doing, everybody? I'm David Cardoza. Alongside me is Megan Holden, and Hello. we're getting set for a tip-off here here on sophomore night. It's the final home game for this BayHawks team as the 2020 regular season. Bayhawks About to come to a close. Bayhawks actually coming off a wing against uh, against Quincy. So see, 90, 90 to Bristol 79. Bristol Community College in the white jerseys. The traditional white jerseys with the green trim. And Northern Essex in the royal blue. And where this one is underway, sophomore night before the game. Our sophomores being honored in their final home game as a Bayhawk. Here's Lopes going, pounding his way to the basket. The trash man for two. Joe Lopes. Which we got approval. We can call him the garbage man now. All right, Northern Essex with the basketball. We're just getting underway. Want to thank our Facebook audience for joining us on our Bristol Community College Athletics page. Freeman almost with a steal there. And there's a steal there, there by go. Dominic Santos. New in the starting lineup. Freeman, fade away from the free throw line. Can't get it to go. Rebounded by Northern Essex. 
We're in the first minute of play. If you're just joining us, it's sophomore night here at LaFrance Gymnasium. Got a good crowd in attendance Thursday, Bayhawks basketball. Again, David Cardoza making Holden here on the call. Thank you for joining us. Drive to the hole and a score by number three for two. That was Tie tough. this game at two. Here's Freeman. They'll swing it. Oh, a nice cut to the basket by Nathaniel Kawanter. He's going to get the foul. I tell you what, Nate G, this is a guy that has really worked hard starting out this year on the bench as a role player, and he's really earned his time. Yeah, he's been coming out as a starter consistently for uh, quite a few games now, and you can feel the presence on the inside when he's in there. Definitely, and his team, the best thing about it is his team is rooting him on. They're giving him words of encouragement. And they're really like his biggest fan. He really has earned his way. And he's got game yeah, he as he hits both free throws. And I think his confidence has been growing and growing. Well, you can definitely they could, uh, use him tonight. He's got a little size here. Bristol and zone is a three-pointer and knocked down. The three-pointer is good. Going back the other way, stolen by Tyler McNeil. McNeil, number 44, bringing it back out. The jumper is good. Nice. Devin Anthony for two. Good little step back. Yeah. Thought about driving to the hole, step back, and quick release, 7-4. Yeah, there's not too much you can go do there with you and Gia. Thought you paid as well as you could. And that ball stolen away as Freeman goes to the ground. Seems like a... Yeah, Bristol in zone here. 18 on the shot clock. Northern Essex having a tough time against his zone right here. Go into the hole it seemed like and missed it seemed like they were having, by Scotty Austin. Having a hard time uh, finding their offense. No, no way to go. I mean, they have the lead, 7-4, so deep three by Nagia. So Can't get it to fall, but Nate G is there. A little bit too hard off the glass. Gets the ball back. Goes to the rack and nice puts it up and in. There. Nice fight there. Good Brian. job. Good job to stay with it, Nathaniel Guanta. I also thought Angie almost probably got bumped a little bit there on a three. But good uh, job by Nathaniel not giving up on the play. Oh, nice little dish inside. That was a nice find. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, I know they only Luis got. Luis Torres for, for two, nine, six. Freeman kicks it back out. Santos. Coming off the screen. Freeman puts it up off the glass. Can't get the friendly roll. Rebounded by Northern Essex. So far, uh, it's been. Allen going. Nice little up and under move. Score it. Some, so far, it's been a struggle uh, for Freeman around the rim. Hopefully, that doesn't discourage him from keep trying. He, we know he can get it. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Here's Nick. Here's Nagia going to the rack, puts it up off the glass nice. and in. Chad Nagia for two. We know Chad's been the last couple home games we've we've covered. Chad been kind of struggling from the field, especially from three point land. Maybe um, a shot like that will get him going here today. Yeah, we were talking about it last time. Gets off to a hot start, but then cools off. He should go in, inside more, and I think he might have hurt us. Good defense there by Gawanter to knock that out of bounds. Gawanter be uh, he's becoming a presence here in the middle. Definitely, definitely becoming a physical presence for the Bayhawks. We have a good crowd on hand here on sophomore night. Three-pointer. It's good. Devin Anthony with a deep three. Well, this could be Bristol's last game of the season, so I think they're trying to go out here and end the season right. Try to end the season out in the, on, a on a bang. Yeah. Three-pointer. That's his shot right nice. there. Chad Nagia for three. Now let's see if he can keep that up all game. And there's going to be a timeout on the floor. We're going to take a timeout here as well. 14-11 Northern Essex with the early lead. And we'll be right back here on your Baywalks Broadcasting Network.
All right, welcome back, everybody, to the France Gymnasium, home of the Bishop Conley High School Cougars, but also the home of your Bristol Community College Bayhawks, right next door to the uh, beautiful campus of the number one community college in Massachusetts. It's all because of me. <laughs> No, it's, great. it's a great college. <laughs> Happy to attend. Step back three. No good. Rebounded by who else? Nate G. Nate G had an amazing game last game. He went off of 40 points. Nagia, deep three for three. Nice. Oh, yes. And Chad, Chad Nagia might be feeling it. I think he's feeling it in his Two, fingers. Back to back threes by him will tie this game at 14. Drive into the hole. Aggressive drive. Nice, nice move there going to the basket. Colin Boucher. Yeah, and Gia just attempted three point, uh, three threes last game. So see if uh, he shoots more here or he goes, he bounces it out more like he did last game. Well, the last home game we covered, he yeah. was really, um, they really defended him well. Yeah. I mean, they weren't really letting him get his shot off. No. Nagia looking aggressive here. Nice pass out. Santos going baseline, puts the runner up, no good. Gawain to try to keep it alive, going back the other way. And he's going to get fouled. I'm noticing uh, Bristol's struggling. Luis Torres. Bristol's a little bit struggling on the interior. Probably due to the lack of, uh, besides Nathaniel, lack of size. Yeah, somebody's going to get back. They're going to get back on defense. Someone's going to stop that. That's you know, no way he should just be getting a free, you know, free lane to the hole there. Yeah, he got to get back on defense. You get a stop ball. You got to get back yeah. to the middle. As soon as that ball gets out of the shooter's hands, they kind of they kind of watch it a little bit. Some players need to start getting back. Pufong uh, entering the game. All three throws are good. Yep, pro O Pufong coming off the bench today. He'll come in. He was a great contributor in a uh, last home game. Did all little things. Cut to the basket. Freeman, nice bounce pass in to to Gawanther and. Go on to her. We'll go to the basket. I mean, we'll go to the line for two. I like that. I think you should uh, go inside more. And who else better to well, give it to than? He's given them. A, he's given them an inside presence, mm -hmm. an inside physical presence that they haven't had all season. I do think they do have like a nice uh, mix of bigs though. <laughs> but Nate G it seems like they have something uh, like a little bit different. Each person, one's more athletic. The other one's more. More uh, grit. Gawanter Gaw hits both free throws. Get a sweet left-handed release. Nice defense by Freeman. The Driving. Good job by Gawanter to come up. But, oh, uh, but getting behind him and scoring. I thought Lopes did a good job there. It just wasn't enough. Devin Anthony, 20 to 16. Lopes kicks it back out to Profong. Flashing to the free throw line. Stepping back at the elbow is Freeman. Oh, that's nice tip in by Lopes. Joe Lopes. Lopes and that, no, that was Nagia. Yeah. Oh. Well, Lopes did have 20 points last game, so I could see why. Driving baseline. Go on through. You get a stop, you get a stop baseline there. Rebounded by Lopes. Nice, nice rebound there by Lopes. Freeman looking to push. Going all the way to the rack. Nice. And boy, when he, when, he gets a, when he gets that second motor going, boy, he's explosive. Freeman for two. 2020. Did not let that hand bother him there. 2020 here on February 20th, 2020. Oh, oh wow. How about that? I don't think we're going to be able to enjoy this much, moment <laughs> much longer, but I think we should. Uh, 2020 yeah. here on February 20th of 2020, and Freeman gets a free lane to the hole. Nobody stopped him. Well, way to, way to ruin it, Freeman. Talk no. about Vanilla. Talk about Vanilla. Oh, that's a double dribble. They missed that. You got it. Oh, gotta, man. Catching it. Anthony goes to the rack. And he's having too much of an easy time there. Yeah. I'm sorry, that was Luis Torres. They have to bump more. Getting uh, get in the lanes. Freeman gets it inside. Lopes gets deep. Nice little turnaround off the glass. Mr. Fundamental, the trash right. man. And we got to prove with it, a couple by the more. Way. We got to prove it, by the way, to call him that. So that is his new uh, certified nickname. What is it? Trash man. We got approval. No, call him the I already I proved it from the, from the get go. That's a deep three and a splash. Tyler McNeil, Freeman, going to his left, puts it up, gets his own rebound. Second and third attempts can't get it to fall. 
calling <laughs> thing about here on uh, Bayhawks. Yeah, and they'll keep it here. Oh, oh I see. No, foul's going to be on Northern Essex. Yeah. Foul's going to be on number 45, Luis Torres. Stanley Freeman will inbound. 25-24. 11.47 to play. Gawenter flashes. Oh, nice. Nice inbound play. Good job by Gawenter to go to the basketball, and nobody blocked him out. Gawenter for two. 26-25. Bristol regains the lead. Oh, pounding his way in. Kick him back out. 17-foot jumper is good. Also, I got to correct myself. It wasn't the last game. It was February 15th against Quincy. The last game they actually lost to Gateway Community College. 75 to 93. So it's been a roller coaster season here for the Bayhawks. Sure has. And that's a turnover. Going back the other way is the Knights. Oh, nice little floater, but it went loose ball. Here's Nagia. Nagia going to the basket. Got caught up. That was a nice. Rebounded by Scotty Austin. Macy's doing a good job, I think, going back again, back to the basket. Fake, driving to the hole, all the way, score it. Nice take there by Torres. Torres getting to where he wants to go. Yeah. You got to do a little bit more with him than just put your hand up. Pufong kicks it back out to Freeman. Oh, Lopes getting deep. Nice turnaround. That's nice. his test. He owns that spot on the court right now. Lopes. I love the, the bounce off the Going back the other way. Nice pass. And Torres scores another two. Coach Fernandez is going to call a timeout. 31 to 28, 10 29 here to play. And we're going to take a timeout here on FRC Media. We'll be right back right after this. Eight ten twenty nine. 29 welcome back, everybody. Again, want to thank our audience, our Facebook audience, on our Bristol Community College Athletics page. Want to thank all of you for watching all season long Bayhawks, ba Bayhawks basketball here on a Thursday night. The final home game, the final regular season game for the Bayhawks. Well, looks like uh, Bristol brought more size inside. More athleticism. Freeman dumps it in, lopes underneath. Surrounded by trees and gets it taken away. I think he might have got fouled there. Little hands. Oh, nice little dish to the trailer, yeah. but couldn't handle it. Freeman going back the other way. Oh, I thought they were, thought they were gonna call a charge, but they're gonna call a they're gonna call a foul on Northern Essex. No, is that gonna be an and one? They score the hoop nice. and Freeman will go to the line. Has a chance to tie it here. This one might be a barn burner. This might be this might be one that goes all the way to the end. Yeah, I, I respect Bristol for how they're fighting. Even though it's last game, they might be out the playoffs. They're still fighting. Uh, yeah. For the Bristol. Bristol right now, unfortunately, on the outside looking in for the first time in a long time. Well, that was kind of expected with all the changes that happened. Only bringing a couple back guys back from I think two guys back returning, different coach. Still, you want to win your final game. You want to win. You want to win your final college game. Absolutely. Something that you'll always remember. Absolutely. Torres again driving to the basket gets it to fall. And I wonder if some of these guys might be moving on next next season. Freeman's a sophomore. Well, will we see him as a Bayhawk next season? I'm sorry, that was Luis Perilla on the last basket. Yeah, Stanley Freeman. Oh, Nagia from the from the elbow can't get it to fall. Finally call a foul there. See now. Uh, and now going to the line. I think. Uh, yes, Nairn. Kristen Nairn. Yeah, Nairn. Drew a blank. Kristen Nairn draws a foul. 33-31. He's been big for them the past couple of games we saw here in Bristol. Really light a spark off the bench. 
Dominic Santos will come in for Pro-O Pufong. Again, Coach Brian Fernandes, season started out with promise. Started off 6-3. and three. And then... And then there were some changes to the team, you know. Sometimes, sometimes the roster changes after uh, after Christmas break. You know, some guys don't stay academically, you know, eligible, and you know, there's there's all kinds of things that can happen. And they're not really playing with a huge bench to begin with, so they couldn't really afford to lose guys. So you're talking about changing an eight to nine men roster to a seven to six. Yeah, you're changing. Yeah, exactly. There's so many factors. You're changing the depth of your roster. You know, you're going to make changes on the fly. Yeah, it's starting lineups and chemistry affects chemistry. There's a lot of changes for this Bayhawks team throughout, before the season and now throughout. You know. But it's the first season. Coach Brian Fernandez in his first season. Oh, yeah, definitely something. Definitely, he can um, yeah, definitely something that he can build on. Definitely something, a season that he'll learn from. You know, but obviously assisting Coach Rob Del Lou for, for some years, and and now this year in his first season as the head coach, did a, you know, with all things, you know, being the way they are, with all things being equal, I mean, did a pretty good job. Yeah. I mean, if they went tonight, they the 500, and uh, they were a great home home team. They protected their court well. Yeah. It's just all about growing. Getting, getting familiar. Yeah, next year he'll have his he'll have his own recruiting class. Nakia uh, comes and hits the three. That's his third three, and it's 35-35. I know they're hoping uh, to see him next year, next season. No, Chad Nakia, sophomore. Oh, sophomore. Oh, so now you're talking about losing possibly your two best players on your team again, and and Freeman and uh, and well, Gia. That's the thing about that's the thing about junior college, you know. There's a frequent, frequent turnover. So I have to give a lot of props to these coaches, especially Bob DeLue, who has successful. Oh yeah, it's so hard. Times. It's yeah. hard to keep. It's hard to keep continuity. You know, but the BayHawks have had a have had a winning tradition, and we'll see what goes on. Driving to the basket, kicking it to the corner, three pointer, way off the mark, rebounded by Nagia, but loses it. You gotta keep your eyes on the ball there. Got a little ahead of himself. Call in. Oh, no, this is going to be a referee. Uh, Got to change the shot clock. Referee's going to take his time. Yeah, I guess the shot clock didn't. Uh, I mean, oh, they reset the shot clock. Yeah, we know here at uh, La France Gymnasium, there's always shot clock problems. Twelve on thirteen on the shot clock right now. It has to be because it's a pressure cooker. Deadlocked at 35-35. Going to the rack. Perillo can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Lopes. So who do you think is going to uh, – well, they probably recruit another point guard, but do you think Freeman uh, will add us to this game going forward if he sticks with basketball, or do you think he will go back to forward? I think his natural position is probably the off guard. Yeah. I think he's done a good job at the, um, at the point guard leading, the, leading this team. He's but I think it's simply by circumstance. I think he's more of an off guard or a small forward. Yeah, he's a definitely he's a facilitator, but I think he gets uh, sometimes gets caught up on wondering what play to make. Driving to the basket, losing it. Lucky to come up with it is Torres. Thirteen on the shot clock. They kick it to the corner. Driving to the basket, nice take there, but couldn't get couldn't connect. And then, oh my goodness, Perillo for three. Can't get it to fall, rebounded by Santos. I think uh, someone needs to give Angia a napkin or something. The ball just keeps slipping out of his hands. <laughs> ball seems to be like a bar of soap. Here's Santos. Try to force it inside to Nairn. And another turnover. Another turnover. Here comes Northern Essex. Nice job by Santos, get a hand in there. Here's Perillo being guarded by Santos right now at the top. They'll get it inside, and they're going to call a foul on Nairn. See, so it'd be interesting here how they split the minutes between Nairn and Nathaniel. The last game that uh, we showed here. I'd like to see them both of the on the court at the same time. Yeah. I mean, they they, they had a lineup. Well, we might have a lineup. I mean, they have a tough time rebounding. Yeah. 
They did that lineup with um, – And Nan will come out. With Naren and Nathaniel last last game we showed. And it was pretty – they did a pretty good job, I thought. Driving to the basket, the floater, and gets the roll. Number 21, Colin Boucher. Yeah, you got to got to bump there more. Get Freeman you. being guarded closely in the backcourt. Couple nice dribble moves there. Freeman gets in the gear. 17 on the shot clock. Freeman, oh, how'd that ball get there? I don't know. Nagia, three-pointer no good. That ball just bouncing around, floating around. Perillo to a driving, to a cutting Torres who couldn't connect on the other end. Here's Freeman. With speed. Freeman to Lopes inside. Lopes fading away, gets nice. to Tarko. Sometimes that kid plays like he's like 6'5". <laughs> how, how he got that shot off, I don't know. I like the adjustments he makes. He's not like he's patient. Exactly. He's always forcing other guys into the air. Gets, gets some good up fakes. Makes up for a lack of, of height. 37-37. This one keeps going back and forth. Driving to the basket. Kicking out for three. Anthony can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Gawanter up to Freeman. Freeman going one way towards the basket. Seems like Too hard off the glass. Yeah. So far, it's a McNeil going up against Santos. He'll get the foul. Santos will commit the foul there. Freeman's still having a rough night around the rim, but you can't let that can't let that get to him. But I thought Angie did a great job getting getting on offense. He was right behind there, just couldn't get the rebound. Five twenty-two here to play. This first half floating by. Yeah. Because we're having so much fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Tyler McNeil misses the first free throw. Again, 5.22 to play here in the first half. 16 fouls by the guests, by the, uh, by the Knights, and five team fouls for the Bayhawks. Both teams really not in foul trouble, although one more team foul for the Knights, and the Bayhawks will be in the bonus. And uh, McNeil misses both free throws. Here comes Freeman. Kicks it back out. Lopes for three. Uh, Way off. Wide right. That's not his shot. Oh. There's a three-pointer. Colin Boucher for three. Can't connect. Now how do you feel Rebounded by Freeman. Now how do you feel about that, leaving guys open threes? You feel like you have to contest everything, but some guys just pick and choose. Well, you get it, well, you get it contested. That's, yeah. that's a shot that he can make, obviously, if he's taking it. Shot clock winding down. Here's Freeman. Freeman. Takes a three, and that's way off. Two air balls, two ugly shots on consecutive times up the floor by the Bayhawks. Not a good shot. Yeah, it's not really much of a plan there on offense. It's kind of just whatever they can. It seems like they're just taking whatever they give them. Defense gives them. They have to start having a plan and moving around. We said this before. 37-37. Bristol in zone. Bristol in 2-3 zone. Ooh, trying to, trying to drive and dish was Alston. He gets it knocked away. Freeman up to Nagia. Puts it up up with the left. Nice pass there by Freeman to get Nagia. Two more for Nagia. Nagia nice. trying to end his Bayhawks career with a bang. He's doing a pretty good job tonight. I think well, he has to be close to double digits by now. Scotty Austin for two. Freeman. See if Freeman... Uh, Oh, no, he passes it up. Nagia kicks it back out to Santos. Santos for three. Knocks nice. it down. I would like to have him seen him get more playing time this season. Kicking it to the corner. Trying to drive, but good defense here by the Bayhawks. Knocked out of bounds. I like uh, Santos' energy. He's always a hype guy. He's always clapping for his teammates, cheering him on. Yeah, he's a good, solid player. Yeah. Three-pointer by Boucher for three. Rims out. Rebounded by Nagia. Freeman looking to push. Going to kick it back out to Nagia. Nagia pulls up from the top of the key. Can't get it to fall. But who's there to clean up the mess? The trash man, Show Lopes. Man, I like how, uh, I like how fast the uh, Bristol's getting to uh, offense here. Pretty quick on a fast break. And they get a rebound and give themselves a second chance. Joe Lopes is 
has been tough inside. 44-39, 3.13 to play here in the first half. So wait, are we calling him the trash man or the garbage man? Because is, is there a difference? You just said it, it was trash man earlier. Yeah, it was trash man, <laughs> but I think you could you call him garbage man or? No, he's a trash man. Trash man, okay, clear that up. 3.13, Joe Lopes having a quiet, quiet good first half. Okay. He gets deep on the block and he's got his little move fading back to his left or to his right. Well, we saw this season, he's definitely capable of having uh, big nights just on a 15th. Uh, he got 20 points against Quincy, so. And he'll be back. So that's someone they can build. Someone they can build with. He'll be back next year, Joe Lopes. Nathaniel Gowanter. Now is Nair Should be back. Is Naren a sophomore or a freshman? Let me look at this. You're supposed to know that, Miss uh, Commentator. I know. Miss uh, color, color Analyst. I know, but he was. 44 to 39. He did take a little break before I came, so. All right, stolen in the backcourt by Freeman. Gets it to Santos, and Santos will draw the foul. Let's and see who that's on. I think it's going to be on Scotty Austin. That's like a wrestler name right there. I'm not sure if he's in the. No, not no. Steve Austin. I know, but I'm saying, I'm just saying, that sounds like a wrestler name. Scotty Austin? Yeah. Steve Austin's little brother? Could be. All right, Dominic Santos will go to the line for two. Bristol with the lead by five. By the way. First free throw. Naren is a freshman, so he will be back next season, probably. And uh, maybe Lopes, Naren, that's not, that's not good, uh, good inside men to build with. Yeah. Um, they do the dirty work. Second free throw was made by Santos. Looks like they're playing a uh, full trap here. Here's a trap. Trap at half court. Almost stolen away by Bristol. I don't know why Bristol doesn't do that a little bit more. Yeah. I know their bench is limited. That, it's kind of tough to stick with, but still. Yeah, they're on and off with it. Fade away jumper. No good. Rebounded and saved by Nick. By nice. Nagia nice into there, Lopes. Freeman kicks it to the corner. Santos thought about it. Gets it knocked away. Ball's on the ball goes out of bounds. And it's uh, Bristol's ball. Gonna, nice. be, gonna be Bristol ball. Nice job by Santos bouncing off the player there. Bristol's on a great job getting their hand on the ball. You just have to, a couple times, slips, slips a little bit, but they've been getting their hands in there. Santos, oh, so a cutting Freeman. I'd like to see more of that. Freeman can't connect in the other end on the reverse lay-in. But it's going to stay Bristol basketball. I don't know why for a split second I thought that was going to be an alley-oop. <laughs> for a split second. Get inside to Lopes. Lopes puts up off the glass nice. and in. Show Lopes. I love that he's shot. A, from he's him. our Bayhawks player of the first half for sure. I love that play, that shot for him. Just turn around right off the glass. When he, when he gets shots around the rim, good things happen. Boucher gets it inside to McNeil. I mean, sorry, Scotty Austin for two. Well, we've seen in uh, previous games, we said this previous games, he just got powerful shoulders. He can just bump guys, bump guys around down there. Yeah, he's stout. He's stout. He's got, he works hard. He gets his hands dirty. That's why we call him a trash man. Is that why? He's blue collar. Gawanter forcing himself inside. Nice, nice. off the glass. Nate G. Thought that was a little Hail Mary, but he got it. I think Gawanter and Joe Lopes. Going forward, those guys could be a good one-two punch. Trap at half court. Kicking in the corner, Boucher for three. He should stop shooting because he can't make anything. <laughs> that's probably why they're leaving him open. And that's going to be a travel. They're going to call a travel on Anthony. Devin Anthony for steps. 49-41. Bristol starting to pull away a little bit with a minute 27 to play here in the first half. Now you know what I'm thinking. Bayhawks in the bonus. For next season, I think uh, let the play co here. Here's Santos. Nagia going around the pick. Nagia in the lane. Oh, Get wow. it. Gets it to go. How do you make that? That was a good little. Yeah. That was a good little move there. Just had good body control. Way to put that one up and in. Going to the basket, strong, and put it up. It's Torres. Over two defenders. Torres having some strong drives to the basket here today. Over two defenders there. 51-43. Oh. Freeman. Almost a lane there. 
Santos. Oh, nice little pass there to Guanter. Oh, but he gets the shot blocked. See, that's where the experience came in. Torres with a good defensive play. Oh, stolen away back by Freeman. Oh, nice dish to Nagia for two. Nice job by Nagia getting back there offensively. Don Nagia streaking to the basket for two. You can always count on him for that. 20 seconds. That's the largest lead for the Bayhawks right now. Northern Essex will hold for the uh, for the final shot of the first half. Well, Bayhawks want to keep the momentum on their side here. Four and a half, so. Boucher. Four. Going to the basket. Oh, uh, you can't call a foul. You could have called no. it a foul? Get out of here. That was all ball. He just bumped into him and fell down. No, Gawanter had good position. Had his hands up. And had all and had all ball. He went into him. Yeah, that was a questionable call there. Yeah, I didn't see that was uh not much contact there. I thought Gawanter had good position, had his hands up and had and all, had all ball there. Got a piece of the ball. Yeah. Ball didn't lie. Don't ball don't lie though. So you already missed one free throw. Let's see. That's it. Well, on the, you know what we used to say on the playground is God don't sleep. <laughs> Guys try to make uh, phantom calls. Second yeah. free throw, no good. Oh, the rebound, the kickback. It will count if it goes. That and Anthony will miss. But that was a quick rebound yeah. and uh, quick rebound and pass out to the perimeter to Anthony. That shot would have counted, but it doesn't. And that is going to do it for the first half. Fast and furious. 53-43, the Bayhawks have the lead over Northern Essex here on sophomore night. Want to introduce a little clip. So uh, Coach uh, Hanley of the women's basketball team was able to sit down with us and talk about his successful season with uh, a lot of firsts this season for the women's. They broke a lot of records, and he was able to sit down with us to tell us about it. Yeah, Coach Jay Hanley, also a first-year head coach. Yes. And um, you got to sit down with him, Megan, and um, you know talk about a team, a women's team that um, had a great bounce back season this season and they're going to the um, New England Regional 21 tournament. So um, why don't we uh, roll that. Coach Jay Hanley with Megan Holden. How has the transition been from going to assistant coach on the men's basketball team to the women's basketball team's head coach? It's been a lot of fun actually. Um, so there have been a number of transitions to be honest. The first transition was um, in going from being an assistant coach with the, our men's program where I was kind of under the guidance of Coach Rob and then making the switch from men's uh, basketball to women's um, in the head role. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of time. The, the main difference between being an assistant and a head coach actually has been in um, the amount of time spent with off the court stuff. Um, as an assistant, most of the, our time as assistant coaches is helping to work on the court with our players, making sure our players develop their game, um, working on game strategy, scouting, all of that. Um, now, having being, in a, being a head coach for the women's program, it's making sure that, that my students and that our players um, are being successful in class. They're going to class. They're getting the, uh, the tutoring that they need. They're working hard both on the court um, and in the classroom. So that's been the most interesting part about it. How did you go about the recruitment process of bringing in new talent? So the, the recruitment process was actually a team effort. Coach, uh, coach Serge Monis, um, who was the previous coach, he did a lot, of, a lot of work with recruiting a lot of our current players. Um, and then when I got the position uh, at the beginning of the summer, I kind of added on. I worked with um, students who had been admitted to the college and then looked um, to build upon some of the players that he had um, that he had recruited previously. So for this year, it was very much a team effort. Um, my biggest thing in the recruiting process and the biggest thing that I focused on when, uh, when I got the position was reaching out to previous players. Katera James was, um, was one of the first phone calls, if not the first phone call that I made in order to try to build those, build and establish relationships um, with returning players, with, uh, with recruits, allowing them to kind of get to know me um, as a person, get to know me as a coach, to be able to have that strong relationship so that way, once the season began, I would able to be able to push them. Um, I think that 
in coaching without having a strong, authentic relationship, it's very hard to push your players um, to achieve the most that they can. Um, and I think that, that the relationship part for me um, as a coach, that's probably the main part of why, why I enjoy this so much. Going into the season, what was your prediction? I think that once we saw the talent that we had and once we got all of, the, all of our players together on the court in the fall, um, and then as that talent and, and the players started to gel, one of our goals was to, to m make the top four and to make this regional, the regional tournament, which we're one game away from it right now. We anticipate reaching that goal. It's a goal that the team and that the, the ladies really set for themselves, and they've been focused on it all the way through. What challenges have you faced so far this season? So for me, I think the challenges are just trying to help my players to manage kind of the day-to-day -day aspect of being a student athlete, um, being a collegiate student athlete, managing their, um, the stresses that come with family, work, um, games, practice, all of that, and, and understanding that it's all kind of a process. Um, I think that it's, it's very easy for our players, for, young, for younger players, for young adults to not understand that stress and kind of trying to figure out how to manage that is very much part of, of the growth that happens um, in being a student athlete. Um, it, 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 it helps to develop that strength that they can, are going to be able to fall back on um, when, they're, when they're done with Bristol, when they're done with their bachelors and when they're in their career. Um, they'll very much be able to look back at these times, hopefully, and be able to see the strength that they had and, um, and fall back on that. How do you think players like Katira James have stepped up so far this season? So I think that for, for Katira, her scoring, um, her scoring has been consistent from the beginning. Um, I think that last year, Katira was, um, needed to handle the ball a lot at the point. And with Atia Rivera, um, our freshman, now able to kind of take over that role, it's allowed Katera to really blossom, to flourish. Trying to extend that lead, driving baseline. Oh, nice, nice drive there by James. Her, her kind of, her strength is clearly being a scorer. Um, and now with Atia at the point, Katera is able to kind of get out in transition in the open floor. Um, put pressure on defenses um, by taking the ball to the to the rim, and then she also is just she's a tremendous three point shooter, um, and she's she's almost ninety percent from the foul line this year. She's actually the um, the leading I believe she's the leading free throw shooter in the in the country, um, if not in the top three. She's the leader in our region at almost ninety percent, and I think that she's in the top three for the country. When looking back on this season in the future years, what do you want people to remember or say? I don't think it's what I would want people to say or to think about. I think it's very much what our players would want, um, would want people to remember them by as they were the team that has kind of raised the bar for the program, for women's, uh, for women's basketball here at the college. I think that our women's soccer team with Coach Tazanari um, and the soccer players really have, have, they started the year off strong by raising that bar for, for uh, for female athletics at Bristol um, with the strong soccer season that they had. And then now I'm proud, and I think our, I know our players are as well, to kind of take that bar and continue to push it. Um, it we've, we've had a lot of firsts this year. Um, we're going to be the first team with a winning record. Um, we've broken the, the, the single season record for wins. So there's a lot for our players to be proud of. I think that once the season ends, um, hopefully a while from now, um, we'll have a chance to kind of look back on that, reflect on the season, and really feel good about it. Right now, we're kind of still in the middle of it. Now, you're talking about all those records and being proud. What specifically are you most proud of your team this season? Um, honestly, what I'm most proud of now, today, is the way that they've gelled, um, kind of on the court and off the court. Um, they, we have a group chat. They are going out together. They're going out to dinner. Um, they're spending nights at each other's house. They're just truly really supporting and picking each other up as a team. Um, that's, what I'm most, that's what I'm most proud of. How do you feel like your team stacks up against other teams in the playoffs? So um, 
Well, we would be in the top four. Um, Massasoit is currently first. They're first in the nation. They've spent the. Uh, they've been ranked in the top three in the nation all year long. Um, they're now 18 and 0, and they're they're a powerhouse. They're very strong. Um, we earlier in the season played them pretty pretty tightly. It was a 10, 12 point game throughout until almost the end, uh, until almost at the end where they wore us down. Um, if we Avery Point, UConn Avery Point is next, and we've played them in two fairly. Well, our last game was was pretty close game. We uh, we were down 54-50 at the half against them, and we ended up losing by eight um, later in the game. So, uh, depending on the matchups, I think that um, I'm optimistic. Um, I think that for this year, we've really um, moved the needle of the program to where. Um, to where now next year as a starting point, we just want to kind of keep pushing that forward. All right, I want to welcome back everybody to Bristol Community College. Well, actually, <laughs> the pressure cooker, Bishop Conley High School. I'm David Cardoz, it's Megan Holden. And uh, Megan, great first half there. Bristol doing a great job getting out to fast breaks and doing really good offensively in this game. Yes, uh, and I mean, Coming off a good uh, home game before with NG again 40 and Lopes again 20. So they're trying to build upon that and, you know, go out with a bang the last game. Yeah, Joe Lopes doing a great job on the in on the interior and Chad Nagia with four threes in the first half. And we're getting ready to start this second half here on sophomore night. I want to thank all of our audience. Thank you for watching this year. <laughs> defense, defense. All right, we're underway. So again, 19 points for Chad Nagia in the first half. As Northern Essex scores two. Nathaniel Gawanter had 10 and Joe Lopes had 12 for the Bayhawks. And leading the, the Knights in scoring, Luis Torres with 14. Devin Anthony had eight. Pretty much rounded out the scoring for Northern Essex. Not getting too much other contributions. Cut into the basket is Nagia. Nice defensive play there by Boucher. Well, it wasn't lack for a 10 for 21. You just couldn't really make. Three-pointer, McNeil, the left-hander, can't get it to fall. Torres with the rebound, kicks it back out to Boucher. Driving. Turn against Gawanter. Good, good defense, good job to assert himself. Gawanter and hold his feet. And then they're going to call travel. travel. They're scared of Nate G. They're scared of him. They don't want to smoke with Nate G. <laughs> you don't want to mess with Nate G. Say that G, I hear, stands for gangster. Yeah? On the mean streets of Fall River. I believe it. What I want to say was, uh, I think uh, Bristol's doing a good job getting the hands, getting involved here, defensively and offensively. Yeah, yeah, Bristol definitely doing a good job on the defensive end. When they got active hands, when they're getting steals and getting on, getting the fast break, because Freeman gets in the lane and gets a little floater to bounce up and in. Well, also on rebounds, too. Sometimes they don't always, you know, grab it, but they get their hands in there and tap it out. Three-pointer by Anthony. It's a nice. swish. Deep three by Devin Anthony. Yeah, that's a, that's a shooter you have to close out on. Not and he's not scared to take it. That's for sure. Nagia from the top for three. Front rims it. Try to respond there. Going back the other way. Northern Essex. Three-pointer in the corner is way off the mark. Rebounded by Nagia. Nagia, Lopes, going strong to the hole. Nah. Count the basket. He's going to the line, the trash man. I love how the other guy fell and Lopes is standing there. <laughs> <laughs> Unbothered. You just bounced off the, yeah. off the trash can. He did. The trash man. It's like a paper getting thrown and you miss. And he's just Phew. Now, uh, Lopes having, it's not as quietly as game, but he's having a great game. Yeah, he's got 14. He can make that 15. Three-point play the old-fashioned way by Mr. Lopes. I love his inside game. Hey, he does a good job with body control, good job with using his body inside. Stolen by Freeman. Freeman spinning. Freeman settles to three. Drains nice. it. Stanley, three, man. He needed to see one go down. 61-48, uh, Stanley, Stanley Freeman had a quiet first half offensively. Good job of Lopes going out to defend that. Great crowd here. You can hear him. Final 
Final game for these sophomores, Chad Nagia. Freeman, You're talking about Chad Nagia, a guy who um, didn't play last year for the Bayhawks. He has an interesting story. Played the year prior and was a key contributor for the Bayhawks and made his way back to the Bayhawks this season. Three-pointer from the wing. Boucher drains it. Yeah. Boucher finally gets one to go. He's been kind of off from the outside, but I give it to him. He really stuck. He's really uh, that really that really hasn't deterred him. He keeps shooting. The Marcus Smart mentality. Yeah. Nakia for three in the corner. Can't get it to fall. Cooled off. That ball hits off the rim a couple times. Going back the other way. Anthony kicks it. Boucher again for three, and he okay. gets two to go now. He's feeling and that's, it. Coach Brian Fernandez is going to call a timeout. 61 to 54. 1641 left to play here. We'll take a break here on FRC Media, your Bayhawks Broadcasting Network. All right, welcome back, everybody, to LaFrance Gymnasium. It's cold outside, but things are heating up inside here in the pressure cooker. It is warm in here. Yeah, it is. It's warm. It's a little toasty in here. February 20th. It's like we had our we had pretty much had our spring for half the winter. Let's not say. get carried away. You get carried away more than any person I've ever met in my Do life. You think? Okay, when's the last time we had snow? It hasn't been above 60 degrees. It's not spring. It is, it is pretty nice. I, mean, I think man, you're being a little. I think you. You don't think. You think your last name is going to be hyperbole. You really don't think it's been nice. You're going to complain about no, the weather. It has, we had. But not spring. Let's not get carried away. Freeman. They lob it into Freeman. Freeman, nice little touch okay. around the rim. Good job by Freeman. Nice dump pass in there. 63 54. Torres. Ooh, cuts through, oh, nice. cuts through Lopes and Gawanter. That was nice. Cuts through them like Swiss cheese. He'll go to the line for two. Nice burst he, there. He saw the lane. He just ran after it. But um, Lopes and Gawanter shouldn't have let him get in between there. I mean, he cut, he cut in between those two big guys like nothing. I think he was just too fast for uh, the energy, which is why we see Naren come in right now. A little bit more athleticism. Try to match up speed wise. Yeah, Gawanter will go out. Still, you got to close that lane up. You got to close that middle up. Torres can't make the free throw. Maryland. Freeman saves it. Nagia gets it back to Freeman. 63 56, seven point lead. Santos for three off the side of the rim and hits the top of the backboard. It'll go out of bounds. Now, before the half, Bayhawks had all the momentum. Now it's kind of uh, shifting back and forth here a little bit. Well, Bristol still has a seven-point lead. It's only a few minutes here in the first half. Three-pointer. No good. Freeman looking to push. Oh, Freeman darts to the basket. Nice. Gets it off the glass and in. That's what he was looking Freeman's for. Freeman's trying to feel himself. Going back the other way. Nice little move there. Kicking it. Oh, nice little trailer there. It's starting to get heated nice up. Little, nice little dish to the trailer, Boucher. 65-58, Naren backs his way in against Boucher. Off the glass nice. and in. Nice little post move. I like Good this. job to use his body. I like this. Oh, That's losing it. Losing it off his foot. Naren picks it up. 67-58. You can feel the pressure cooker getting a little hot. Nagia steps back. Couldn't get it off the glass. Boucher in the open court to Anthony. Anthony, oh, he thought about it. Drives to the hole. Puts it up off the oh, glass wow. and in. Nice job by Anthony. Gia got to get their hands up a little bit there, but that was a great play by Anthony. Yeah, Anthony thought about the three and then took it to the rack. Shot was off balance, but what a great shot. Cut into the basket. Freeman. 
Freeman in oh, the post nice. gets well, it to go. What you can do, I can do better. It's been an inside game here. Well, I like to see Freeman do a little bit more of that. I like to see him get on the block. Well, he was trying the first half, it's just he wasn't getting the goal. I think he could do some damage down there. He definitely can. Oh, that looked like a walk. That's a travel. Rebounded by Lopes. Hope miss calls this game. Oh, nice. Oh, Freeman. Nice dribble moves. Back up to Nagia for three. Contested. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Nairn. Gets it taken away. The referee's going to call a jump ball. I think that was probably going to stay here. It's probably going to stay Bay Bayhawks basketball. Possession arrow in favor of the Bayhawks. Thought they could have called a foul there. It looked like uh, they got a hold on Aaron's arm a little bit. And then we get some substitution on the floor. Tyler McNeil, Colin Boucher, and Devin Anthony go out for Northern Essex. Oh, yeah. oh that's a, it's a bad turnover. Poor communication right there. Luis Perillo, number 42, is in. Driving to the basket. Up and under move. Nice. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Lopes. Amazing defense there by Lopes. Gets his hands up, contested his yeah, shots. He does, he does a good job yeah. of holding his ground. Freeman goes to the basket, and he'll draw the foul, who goes to the line for two. Now, next year, this is what I'm thinking. Put um, Nathaniel and uh, maybe Nair in on the inside and have Lopes there at the forward position. And you get some, get some recruit some guards. I think uh, you have a solid five. Freeman will go to the line. For two. Again, we have a great audience on sophomore night. Final home game for the Bristol men. They've been playing hard. They protected home court pretty well this season. Away, they struggled a little bit. But they definitely something they can learn from and take away for next season. Second free throw. Freeman gets the bounce. 71 to 60. Coming up on 14 minutes to play. Oh, almost another steal. Yeah, oh. steal. Oh, uh, Freeman gets it stolen away by Torres. Good job by Torres to get back and steal that one. Surprise. Uh, Freeman gets his hands on a lot of balls. Going to the rack strong. There's number three. All the steals in this game. Surprise the police having showed up. <laughs> oh <my laughs> That's a knee slapper. Oh, my goodness. You're welcome, audience. Bozzy Bear. Oh, nice, nice denial there. Good defense by Scotty Austin to get in front to front Lopes. They're going to call a foul on Dominic Santos. That's his second. Santos with the foul in the open court. Santos will go to the bench. Pro-O Pro -O Pufong will come in. Perillo for three. High arcing shot, can't get it to fall. Lopes with another rebound. Pufong's also Lopes having a good game. Yes. Pufong's also another freshman that's coming back, probably coming back next season. And uh, also another guy I think they could build with. Nice. Contributed well this season, I think. There's Freeman. Back up to Nagia. Nagia driving to his left, puts it up with the left and scores nice. it. They're going to miss that. Nice take there by Nagia. Bristol looking to trap at half court. Here's Perillo. Perillo. I swear, these little guys for Northern Essex. They can get in. They're not scared. They get into the lane. Are they going to call? They're not scared. Oh, I thought, yeah, I was thinking if they're going to call, he tries to sell them now on the, a shooting. Now, the foul's going to be on the floor. Yeah. Foul's going to be on Pufong, his first. Try to sell them a little bit. They weren't buying it. Ooh. They were not going inside. Eight on the shot clock. Perillo. Bristol doing a good job defensively. Nair in Perillo's face. Three-pointer by Torres. Way off the mark. Shot clock will go off. Shot clock violation. That ball did not hit the rim. It'll be Bayhawks basketball. 72. I mean, sorry, 73-62. That was great defense there by Bayhawks, which has kind of been their, kind of been their uh, theme throughout the, throughout the season. Great defensive team. Lopes trying to get it inside to Nairn. Nairn backs his way in. Oh, good job to a cutting. I'm sorry. Oh, I got I got Freeman and Nairn. Freeman and Nairn both with the friggin' with the high top. Going back the other way. Oh, nice play by Lopes. Lopes had a block there. Backing his way in. Backwards is Scotty Austin. 
You gotta get the rebound there. Especially after a good block. I got Freeman in there and I got them both mixed up on the last possession. I was just looking at hair. But Naaman's a little taller. He is a little taller, but when you're just looking at it quick, yeah. you just see hair. Maybe that's something we could talk with. Everyone has to have a different hairstyle. Or maybe we should start looking at shoes. Talking about shoes. Like coupons. Red and blue there. Seventy three uh, to sixty two. Bayhawks able to hold on to a lead here. Yep, Austin misses the first free throw. Timeout. All right. Timeout on the floor. 70, 73 63. Bayhawks have the lead. Bayhawks been in control of this one since about the halfway mark of the first half. Eleven forty eight to go. And let's take a little break here. We'll take a break here on the court. We'll be right back right after this message. I always knew I wanted to go to college. I just didn't know how or when. Bristol gave me the flexibility to balance work, family life, and the things I love to do. I was able to transfer and get a bachelor's degree in the field I am passionate about. Bristol helped me so I can help others. Working as a mentor and a coach, I know I'm making a difference. And I'm able to show my kids and others the value of a college education. It's never too late. Your dreams are within reach at Bristol Community College. All right, welcome back to LaFrance Gymnasium. 73-63, Bayhawks have the lead. 11.48 to play. Bayhawks trying to end this season on a positive note. Coach Brian Fernandez and his Bayhawks team looking to wrap up this looking to wrap up his first campaign as a, as a Bayhawks head coach. And it's been an up and down season. Yes. But um, definitely, definitely a lot to build on. Well, Lopes is ending the season uh, great. Maybe you can help pick that up next season. They definitely have some pieces they can well, build with. You never know what can happen. Yes. I mean, guys. Can transfer. You know, and junior college is a, is a different, it's a different game. Jumper from the elbow by Freeman, no good. Oh, that pass way, that pass sails out of the reach. Good hustle by both teams here. Just diving off the loose balls, getting their hands dirty. Ali Balut, that sails out of the reach, number 10. Northern Essex looking to double team. Pufong going to his left, Ooh, can't get it to fall. Balut with the rebound. Couldn't get that spin. Perillo. Goes to the basket. Oh, that oh, ball. Yep. And they're, they're going to call goaltend. For sure. That's going to be an offensive goaltending on Balut. Even, that ball was in the cylinder. I could even call that. It's a 10 point game here. He didn't need to touch that. That ball was probably going no. down. He didn't need to. Well, uh, they at least got the rebound. It looks like they had, the, they had well, the men there. Yeah, he didn't need to mess with it. Got a little like too excited. Trying to, trying to show his ups, I guess. Well, Bayhawks trying to break this trap. They gotta work Freeman. on their, They gotta work on their picks. Yeah, no one's coming up to set a screen. Nagia for three off the mark. Rebounded by Anthony. We're approaching the halfway mark of this second half. Of this half. It's been a back and forth game. Oh, Anthony just pops it. Can't get it to fall. Long rebound. Santos tracks it down. Well, we've seen him made that before, so you, you can't give him the space. Freeman kicks it back out, Santos. Northern Essex playing man-to-man -man right now. Nice denial there by Perillo. Perillo on the open court. Perillo, he'll go to the line, and they're going to call a foul by, on Freeman. That was a nice hustle there by Freeman though, to get back, not to give him the easy, uh, give him, not give him the easy look. Yeah, but Luis Perillo did a good job of kind of, you know, not allowing Freeman to block it. He did a good job using his body. Well, he has a good burst, too. Yeah, between Perillo, number 42, and number 45, Luis Torres, those two guys, they have a good, they have a good first step, good quick first step. Yeah, this is definitely an inside, inside team. They can, they can get a three once in a while, but you want to protect the paint. Second free throw by Torres is good. See if, uh, and Northern Essex has cut this lead to eight, and they're playing man-to-man -man all over the court right now. 
force some pressure here. On yeah, force some pressure and taken away by Perillo. And coming up with a layup. It's going to be Daniel Almirante. And uh, Northern Essex has cut this lead to six with 10.02 to play. We'll take a break here. 73-67, don't go away. This one is a, this one's a close one. We'll be right back right after this. I always knew I wanted to go to college. I just didn't know how or when. Bristol gave me the flexibility to balance work, family life, and the things I love to do. I was able to transfer and get a bachelor's degree in the field I am passionate about. Bristol helped me so I can help others. Working as a mentor and a coach, I know I'm making a difference. And I'm able to show my kids and others the value of a college education. It's never too late. Your dreams are within reach at Bristol Community College. All right, welcome back. 73-67. Bristol did have a 10-point lead. It was 73-63. And Northern Essex chipping away at this lead just a little bit. Yeah, the to make it a six, it's a six-point game. Bristol was up by as many as 11 or 12. But now this lead with a lot of time left to play. Bristol's been in control of this game mostly, Megan, but right now, 73-67, this game is not even close to over. What's, what's happening is they're just losing the control of the ball. This ball's all over the place and a team well, of defenses. Northern Essex doing a good job system. playing man-to-man -man defense right now, doing a good job trapping and forcing Bristol to make a... Uh, some negative plays here. Freeman. Oh, they had Nate G. Oh, oh Nate G, but that's a bad bad pass by yeah. Santos. Threw it behind Nate G, a little bit too hard as well. Yeah. And Northern Essex is forcing some turnovers with this man-to-man -man full court pressure. What we got to do, you got to move. They can't just stand there and hold their hands up. They got to run around. Ooh, setting the screen there. And going to the basket is Perillo, but good job there by Lopes. Who might have got a piece of that? Oh, good job, Nigia. The pass from Freeman nice. in front of half, from half court. I like, I like. And uh, the Bayhawks needed that one. They like, needed that basket. I like when Nigia balances his game out. Get some, he can get some three point line, but inside game is just as important. Yeah, he does a good job as a basket hanger. Oh, going to the rim and getting the contact yeah. is Austin, and he'll go to the line for two. Yeah, Nigia, a little bit too early with, with that. So, uh, Another thing is, too, is, a, is Northern Essex is doing a good job going to their bench. They're, they're subbing guys in and out. They got guys on their bench that can play. Bristol playing right now a little bit of a limited bench, as we know. And uh, Bristol losing a couple key players. I mean, they losing losing um, T.J. Hendry, who's been a starter most of the season and a key contributor on the interior. Yeah. And uh, they've missed him the last few games. Well, that's why we've seen Nathaniel get uh, more minutes this game. And maybe uh, maybe it's a chemistry thing. Maybe they're just used to having Henry out there more and just trying to find, uh, find a way to get Nathaniel involved more. Again, Northern Essex with the pressure. Gawanter, nice there job, nice job there. They heard me. Good job to catch it. Going back the other way. Anthony going to lose this one out of bounds. Oh, oh wow. did a great job saving it there to Austin. They kick it in the corner, Perillo for three. Can't get it to fall. Northern Essex, again, keeps it alive. Anthony Ooh. gets it inside Someone tell Anthony, to Perillo. Someone tell Anthony that the Patriots might need a new QB. Yeah, I, right? I, I like his passing. That was a great pass. I'm not sure how it got over Nagia and how it, how it even got to number 42, Perillo, who scored the two. But that was a good pass was, by Anthony. Yeah, perfect timing. Perfect, this, this placement, everything. Like I said, sign that man. Yeah. Sign him so what, we can go 0-16? No, I'm sure we can at <laughs> least win one game. I mean, Bill Belichick won with Matt Castle. I'm sure you can win with Anthony. Nagia going to get fouled. Nagia, like I said, I just like, I like so this. So Bill Belichick won with Matt Castle, a professional yeah. quarterback, so he can win with Devin Anthony, number I, 44 I from uh, never, Northern Essex yeah, Junior never, College. I never doubt Bill. Never, he, he, like, I don't know, Megan. I don't know what you're smoking, but this is you got to stop. You got to stop smoking it. You just saw those passes. Don't act like you're not hyped. All right, first free throw. Goodbye, Nagia. 
That's going to be an interesting season, though. Not just for the Bayhawks, but for the Patriots. A lot of changes this year. 2020 has come with a lot of changes. Well, you never know. We'll see. Time will tell. Second free throw, no good. 78-69. Bayhawks nine-point lead. Coming up on the eight-minute mark. The kick out. Ooh, to get inside. I don't know what's going on inside over there. Perillo for three. Gets it to go. How did that happen? That ball was floating around the interior. All of a sudden, the ball gets kicked out to Perillo all alone for the three-pointer. Yeah. Stone away. Oh, great job there by Torres to Perillo. Perillo can't connect on the other end, though. Great job and a steal and a pass there by Torres and a great hustle. Perillo could not connect on the other end. That would have cut the lead to four. Bayhawks get away with one there. From the, uh, from the elbow. Oh, good job by Kawanter. Uh, He's there for the rebound and the score, the tip. He's having a good second half here. Neji, definitely something to build on. His confidence, that, if that young man, if he can work in the offseason, get a little bit stronger and work on his footwork, he could be a key contributor for next year's uh, Bayhawks team if he decides to come back for a sophomore campaign. Deep three, it's good. Nice. Well, look like they're not Tyler McNeil for the three. Cuts the lead to five with lots of time to go. Looks like their guards not only go in the basket, they can, they can shoot the three. You got to respect it. Well, McNeil, was, he had a couple of those in the first half. Here's Freeman. Freeman, buying time. Goes to the basket. Reverse lay-in. Nice. Good job by Freeman being patient. Freeman with the reverse lay-in. Bayhawks needed that. Good answer. 82-75, 6.40 to go. Made a couple plays like that the second half. Three-pointer McNeil again. Can't get it to fall. Loose basketball. Santos comes away with it. Nice job by Santos staying with the play. Freeman, take it to the basket. Oh, Santos in the corner. The pass from Freeman. Jumper's good. Good job by Freeman there to create. Santos getting open in the corner. Knocks it down. Bayhawks up by nine now. Good job by the Bayhawks to respond. I'm happy he's getting a lot of minutes this game. McNeil kicks it back out. Alamante can't get it to fall. Nice, nice tip there by Freeman. Heads up play. Santos to Nagia lays it in. Nice. But the play started with Freeman. Freeman did a good job tapping that out to Santos, who gets it to Nagia. And Bristol back up, back up by 11. McNeil going all the way to the basket. Defense creates offense. That's been the story for the Bayhawks this season. When the defense is going, the offense gets easy, fast breaks. Freeman, to me, that was like a rondo play. Had the wherewithal to knock that, you know, to just hit that one with his hand. Boucher for three. Oh, I, are you Ooh, that pops out. McNeil with the rebound and the putback. Did you compare a community college student to a professional? That's I just said it was a similar play. That was a similar play. Oh. Not that he... It didn't say that he could play quarterback for the Patriots. I don't know. Nagia spinning in the lane. Lopes on the block. Oh, Mr. Fundamental. Oh, oh, couldn't get it to fall. You know, Dave, I feel like you're really fun at parties. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I am. <laughs> nice oh, deal. stolen away by Freeman. Freeman picks his pocket. Freeman accelerates to the basket, lays it up and nice. in, gets the foul. Freeman's having a good Good night, half. nurse. Freeman. Doing both sides. Defensively and offensively, the second half. Oh, Freeman's a great two way player. We know that. Freeman with a steal. Yeah, first Freeman half. always uh, creates his. Uh, his own shot, yeah. You know, he creates, creates good offense with his defense. In the first half, he was struggling on a win, though, but I'm happy he uh, stuck with it. Well, Freeman completes, completes the three point play the old fashioned way. Bristol, see probably with his largest lead of the game now, 89-77, Bristol. Three-pointer in the corner by Boucher. Boucher keeps the Knights alive. See, see Knights can, needed that three-pointer. See if he can get warmed up again. He had a nice little spurt. Oh, stolen away, Kayla's basketball. Perillo going into the lane, and Bristol just, they just allow that to happen. Come on now. You just, you can't, you had the momentum on your side. You don't want to lose it here. I was just about to say the Bayhawks were, up by five, 80 to 75, and went on a nine to two run. Yeah, the two and now, Northern Essex right back in it. Can't get comfortable. Can't get too comfortable. Here's Freeman. 
Jab step, goes to his left, puts up the floater, Ooh. and they're going to call an offensive foul. Yeah, he had good positioning there. Goodness gracious. Good job, but I think it's a good timeout here by uh Yeah, it's Penny. a good timeout on the floor. 414 to play, 89 to 82. Let's take a small break here. It's 414 to play, 89 82. And we'll take a break here on FRC Media, your Bayhawks Broadcasting Network. I always knew I wanted to go to college. I just didn't know how or when. Bristol gave me the flexibility to balance work, family life, and the things I love to do. I was able to transfer and get a bachelor's degree in the field I am passionate about. Bristol helped me so I can help others. Working as a mentor and a coach, I know I'm making a difference. And I'm able to show my kids and others the value of a college education. It's never too late. Your dreams are within reach at Bristol Community College. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 414 to go, 89-82. Bayhawks were... Bayhawks had an 80 to 75 lead. Northern Essex was doing a good job of uh, making a making a little bit of a comeback. It looked like the uh, the Bayhawks were, you know, losing their momentum. It looked like Northern Essex was going to, uh, you know, come back into this one. Then the Bayhawks ripped off a few baskets, got a few steals, and um, and up the up the lead, Megan, to 89 to 77. It was a 12 point lead. But now Northern Essex has made a little bit of a run themselves going on a 5-0 run, a modest 5-0 run to make it 89-82 with still enough time to try to do something. And back on the other end, uh, before we went to break, Freeman drove to the basket, and it was a charge call. Northern Essex picked it up, going back the other way. Anthony, they swing it. They get it inside. Torres does a good job using wow. his body. Reverse layup. How does he do it? He's their scorer. And now it's back to a five-point lead. 7-0 run for the Knights. Knights are abusing uh, Bayhawks on inside. Bristol needs a good solid possession here. Nagia for three. Oh, can't get it to fall. And rebounded by Boucher. Northern Essex trying to make this a three-point lead. Up and around. Who's there? Torres for two. It's a three-point lead now. And Gia tried to get the foul there by taking a, taking a charge, but he just didn't get, get there early enough. Now you, nearly, now you really need a good possession. Freeman loses. The, oh. oh, they're going to call a foul on Boucher, and rightfully so. That was a reach-in foul. Bayhawks got to make the most of this possession here. They got to get momentum back on yeah, their side. Yeah, that's only, that's only the 15th foul, though, on the Knights. So Bristol will not be shooting. Take Lopes. Oh, there good job go. by Lopes there. Oh. oh. Call a foul on. They're going to call a foul on Naren. They're going to call a foul on Christian Naren with a push off. He pushed, he pushed off to get that rebound. I, I want to see Lopes. Let me go to Lopes. Lopes has been great first half with that spin around, bounce off the, the backboard. I want to see more of that. Yeah, Lopes has been, since he had that three point play early on in the, in the half, Lopes has been kind of quiet. I like to see them. I like to see him post up more in the block here, especially down the stretch. And right now, the Knights are in the bonus. They have, they're going to be shooting free throws from here on out. First free throw made by Scotty Austin. Nine team fouls for the, by the Bayhawks. So, like I've been saying, they've been struggling on inside here, and uh, Spring Tech knows to take advantage. Second free throw. That 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 free throw would have cut it to within one. Freeman being guarded closely by Anthony. Let's we'll see if Bristol can get a good shot here. They're going to need it. We'll see if Freeman can get something going to the basket. Lopes coming up to set a pick. Freeman gets it inside to Lopes. Ten on the shot clock. Northern Essex doing a good job playing man-to-man -man defense. Good switches. Santos, step back three-pointer, short. And now Northern Essex has a chance to tie this game and dare say it, take the lead. Nice little hesitation move. Drive it to the basket. It's who else? Luis Torres, number 45, ties the game. And just like that, a 12-point lead erased in, in, in minutes. Well, the difference is confidence. The Bayhawks just doesn't seem confident. No one wants to take the shot. On the other side, they're just making the right plays. What well. just happened? 89 to uh, – oh, and, and Freeman's lucky that he didn't get uh, – A charge get char Yeah, another charge call. And that foul is going to be on – Number 11, Tyler McNeil. 
And as I was saying before, it was 89 to 77. Bristol actually had its largest or matched its largest lead of the game. And now a 12-0 run by the Knights has tied this game with time to spare. Yeah, they fell asleep a little bit Come on, on the Bristol. side. Get a persevere. Freeman goes to the basket, puts it above nice the glass, shot. and in. Freeman always seems to come up with those big hoops. And then uh, look at the ball went out, trying to go out the gym. Still got two minutes to play here. Where do they think it's going? Wake the bleep up. Defense. 91-89. Well, we got to think this does have to do with uh, the shortness of uh, bench here. Maybe the just again. Megan, you're always making excuses. No, I'm not. <laughs> you're always making. <laughs> You're always making excuses I think this is for a, them. I think this is a valid, valid excuse. Cross court pass, Freeman. I mean, Anthony has a deep three, rebounded by Freeman. I had Freeman on the brain. Nice job. Knew guys. Freeman was going to come through. Bristol has the lead and the basketball. Minute 45 to go. If you're watching at home, I know you're not going away. This one's going to go down to the end. Sophomore night. Bristol, Bristol's postseason hopes. A little bit bleak, but they're playing, definitely playing with pride. Freeman stops at the free throw line. I think I think Austin might have got a piece of that. Anthony with the pass to Torres, going to the basket, ties the game at 91. That was just deja vu of the play two plays ago. Lopes, back out Santos. Get it, to, get it to Freeman. Get it to your, get it to your best ball handler, your best playmaker. But they got to move Anthony, around. Anthony, all over Freeman like a cheap suit. Minute to go. Sophomore night. Freeman to the basket. Oh, Gawanter can't hold on to it. He looks like Ooh. he got hit in the face. And they're going to call that off on Northern Essex. They're going to call that off on number 11. Yeah, I think I got a little piece of a... Uh, that ball looked like it went off Gawanter. Yeah, well, also, he got a little piece of AG's face. Well, he's... McNeil, yeah, McNeil re did reach in. Like in baseball, they say tie goes to the runner, and that was definitely a close play. So Bristol had the basketball. They lose it out of bounds. It'll be their ball. Freeman underneath. Gets it inside. Ooh, oh, love oh, falls shit. to the floor. Man. Northern Essex has a chance to take the lead. Booster for three. Going to be short. Rebounded. Got to box out. Got to Yeah, well, that's a long rebound. That was a tough one. And you got to keep his eyes open. Gets his man. Oh, that's a double dribble. There that's a go. travel. That's a double dribble. Well, the Bayhawks needed something. Boy. The Bayhawks needed something. See if they can take advantage. 91-91. 33 seconds to play. It's getting intense here, intense here in the pressure cooker. That's for sure. Faculty, friends, family here on sophomore night. Last game for these sophomores, last game for the Bayhawks, most likely for this season. I want to see Here's Freeman. a play here. I don't want to see someone doing it themselves. Move around. All right. Bristol's going to hold. Bristol should hold for the last shot. It's a three-second discrepancy right now between shot clock and play clock. Ten on the shot clock. Thirteen on the game clock. Freeman needs to get something going to the basket. Oh, they there passed it to Lopes. Oh. Too hard. Loose ball. Freeman goes to the basket, puts it up, and in! Stanley Freeman wins it for the Bayhawks. Wait a minute, three-pointer, it's up! There it's go, no good, Bayhawks go. win! Bayhawks win, Stanley Freeman with the loose ball, puts it above the glass and in. The Bayhawks are winners here tonight on softball night. That's why Damn you right, 93-91, Bayhawks win it. That's how you want to end the season right there. That's how you want to end Probably your... Probably the most exciting game of the season. Crowd, the crowd loves it. A game that looked like it was just a another game. 89 to 77. The Bayhawks had the 12 point lead. Northern Essex came back with a rampant with a rampant surge to tie the game up. This one was hanging in the balance. Looked like it might go to overtime. Lopes missed the missed the layup. Loose ball. Freeman came up with it, put it up the glass, and Stanley Freeman is your Bayhawks player of the game on sophomore night. Who else? Holy cow. Who else you give it to after that? Man, they know how <laughs> to keep it exciting. Gonna, yeah. Who else you going to give it to? I thought Stanley Freeman definitely. <laughs> after the second half? I thought Stanley Freeman definitely asserted himself in the second half. Yeah. He said, this is my team. This is my game. And Stanley Freeman definitely came to play in the second half. And um, that was a. What a turn of events. I yeah. thought we were going to overtime, Megan. Freeman. Just carried the team there. Yeah, so calm on that last play. Puts it above the glass. 
And um, the trash man. Had a good game, but Freeman, after that play, yeah, you have to give it to him. Well, Freeman was a trash man on that play because yeah. he came up with it, grit, heart, came up with the loose ball, had the wherewithal to put, you know, to take it to the hole, put up off the glass with three seconds to go. Northern Essex had a chance to win the game at the end. Short. Yeah. But that's it. I will take it. <laughs> All right. So that's an exciting game, ladies and gentlemen, on our last uh, men's Bayhawks game. But stay tuned for more basketball because the Bristol Community College women's basketball team in an historic season, the most wins they've ever had. And um, under Coach Jay Hanley, the women's team is focused. They have a game on Saturday, which we will not bring to you, but next weekend. Stay tuned because Bristol Community College in Region 21 um, will be. We're not, not sure when when they're going to play, where they will play, but um, Going to get the to women, yeah, the women's uh, basketball team is uh, doing some great things, and again, setting records this season with their victories. A lot of firsts. And we'll be looking forward to it, Megan. Yes. All right. So for David Cardoza, a lot of people here to to uh, to recognize here for David Cardoza, for Megan Holden. Steve Reese, the tech man for Lucy Cabral with a great rendition of the national anthem. And our Alicia, Alicia with the, uh, with the great camera work here today from Bishop Conley High School. The final score on sophomore night, the Bayhawks in their finale, 93 to 91 over Northern Essex. I want to thank our Facebook audience uh, for watching us all season long. But we, again, we do have more basketball to bring to you. So for for all of us, to all of you, thank you for watching Bayhawks basketball here tonight. 93-91, Bayhawks the winners. Good night, everybody.